As well you can appreciate, Westminster Choir College has turned out dozens of composers over the years who have made different kinds of contributions to vocal and instrumental literature. Here are just a few samples from such familiar Westminster names as George Lynn, Warren Martin, and David York.
I'd like to play a prelude I have composed for organ on two traditional tunes, tunes that certainly have been sung on many, many occasions at Westminster Choir College. One is the familiar Now Thank We All Our God, or Nun Danket, which actually came out of the Thirty Years' War and was originally intended not for corporate worship, interestingly enough, but as a musical mealtime grace. The other tune is Let Us Break Bread Together on Our Knees. We've sung this many times at the choir college, heaven knows, and it is one of the beautiful black spirituals that we associate with communion services. It's been said that hymns can melt down the frozen places in life. It's an old motto, but I happen to think it's true. Certainly hymns have a way of breaking down denominational differences. They can be a blessed tie that binds. I guess hymns are in my blood not only because I've edited a few hymnals and managed to sneak into about a dozen hymnals as the composer of those unfamiliar second tunes congregations cordially loathe, but also because one of my ancestors was Thomas Hastings, the man who did so much for the cause of hymns with Lowell Mason and others in the 19th century. Some of the most moving moments I experienced at Westminster Choir College during my years there were moments when all of us sang the great hymns of the church. I guess the alumni knew how I felt about hymns. That's why when I left and they very graciously dedicated the chapel to me, they presented me with a letter in Isaac Watts's own handwriting. I've hung it over the desk at home, over the desk at which Thomas Hastings composed the familiar Top Lady tune to Rock of Ages. <laughs> 